patent and future development, please call plus 220-776-2333 or 376-2333. Heroes do walk amongst us, everyday people doing extraordinary things. And now, the Fatu Network presents live at the Coco Ocean Resort and Spa on Friday, 18th March 2022. For their devotion, their sacrifice, their innovation, their service. Heroes Awards bringing together the biggest names of 2021. Movers, shakers, leaders, shapers, making a difference one giant leap at a time. There will be live performance by Yusundu and Jaliba Kuyate. Heroes Awards, our very own everyday heroes. The Heroes Awards, honoring inspiring personalities. This event is supported by Afrisol Gambia Limited.
Good evening, this is GRTS News, broadcasting for viewers in the Gambia and around the world. Our top stories this hour. More aspirants for the forthcoming parliamentary elections submit their nomination papers to the Independent Electoral Commission. The Vice President, Her Excellency Dr. Issa Duture, commends Government of the Gambia for promoting the rights and welfare of women and girls. Enhancing agricultural mechanization, the Regional Rice Value Chain Project presents agricultural machines to the National Seed Secretariat in Aboko. And in sports, the National Inter-Schools Athletic Championship kicked off at the Independent Stadium in Bakao. Elsewhere, a Nigerian woman produces eco-friendly sanitary towels to help girls stay in school as well as save the environment. Well, these are other stories coming ahead in the next one hour. I am Esa So. Thanks for joining us. It is great to have you. We begin this bulletin with the forthcoming parliamentary elections because the IEC's returning officer in Mansa Konko on Thursday received nomination papers of six candidates from the United Democratic Party, the UDP, vying for National Assembly seats in the Lower River region. Jartesis Usman Balde has the rest of that story in this report. Two out of six incumbent candidates under the ticket of the United Democratic Party on Thursday tendered their nomination papers to the IEC returning officer in Mansa Konko, Lower River region. The candidates include Lamin C.C. Vine for the Kiang West constituency, Honorable Seni Ture for Jara West, Honorable Bakari Kamara for Kiang Central, Wandifa Wuye Sane for Jara Central, Honorable Yaya Gasama for Kiang East, and Honorable Kajali Fofana for Jara West, who is also searching for a second chance at the National Assembly. Both expressed their different opinions ahead of the election on the 9th April 2022. The first candidate to file in his nomination papers to the IC returning officer in Mansa Konko, headed by Lamin J. Jadama, was the new candidate in the contest, Lamin Sise of Kiang West. The fact that they are oppositions, they've been marginalized by the previous government um, uh, of President Jame for over 22 years. Um, uh, we lacked so many basic amenities, and, uh, pipe born water, and, uh, good road, um, uh, and as well as electricity. Our schools are not as well equipped with good teaching and learning materials. These are some of the factors that motivated me to definitely run for office to help my constituency to have these natural rights that they were deprived from having and, uh, for over 22 years. And one of the reasons that motivated me to come to the National Assembly is principally to better the lives and livelihoods of my people, that is the people of Jada East constituency. And I think in my pursuit to bring development to their doorstops, I have never relent. And this is why I found it you know, right to throw my heart in the ring for the second time. Then we have what is called prohibition on torture bill that is yet to be completed at the assembly. So this is why I'm looking for a second time to go and complete those work. Remember there are people that were named by the TRRC and then you know in the Gambia here we don't have law on torture. So the National Assembly is on the verge of completing the law that will really help us to prosecute those that are found wanting. The electorates in the Jara Central um, needs a lot of empowerment, a lot of encouragement to be part of the economic development of this country, especially the women folk. So I feel that there is a need for me to represent them in the house so that I'll push their agenda in the house. I have served my five-year term with diligence, with dedication and with hard work. And the people who brought me to Parliament in 2017 are happy with the way I've represented them in Parliament. I'm going back to my seat. 
and my competitors also, let them try their best. Probably, come next time, they might be an MP. But for this time, I just want to keep, let them keep trying. You have to keep trying until you reach to the point. Meanwhile, the IEC would be referring their nomination papers to determine their fate ahead of the election scheduled for next month. Usman Balle, GRTS News. Meanwhile, in the Banjul administrative area, three independent candidates have filed in their nomination papers at the IEC's office in Banjul. Our Janke Ture reports from the country's island capital. Today is the day seven of the nominations for candidates vying for the vacant parliamentary seats in the capital city, Banjul. Three independent candidates, namely Al Hajija of Banjul Central, Abdullah Njai of Banjul Central, and Fatumat Njai of Banjul South, respectively, filed their nomination papers at IEC Regional Office. Following the verification of documents of each candidate, the IEC Returning Officer Suleiman Juf urged the candidates to adhere to the election protocols set by the electoral body. Having the knowledge that and the belief that you are set to be a candidate and then you must take the responsibility of being the leader of the people that you want to represent at the National Assembly from the word go. We expect you to lead by example. Speaking to journalists after their nominations, the aspiring candidates said they are optimistic of victory come April 9th and promise to work towards uniting the people of Banjo. When I get out there, whatever I'm involved in debating, I would, I would look at the best interests of my constituency, the city council, Banjul and Gambia at large. The fact that I understand what legislation, what I'm representation means, should guarantee my re-elections. I know that we should hold the government accountable. I know that when we get to the parliament, we should be, um, we should be um, impartial. We should not be, we should not be biased on which side we are in. And I think that is one reason why I'm going independent for now, having been there for five years. Um, part of our um, priority areas is to try and. Um, uh, I mean some of the constitutional laws, but most importantly, what we really as aspire and hope that will, it will be implemented is the coming back of the draft constitution, um, because there are many um, uh, clauses in the constitution that really favors the entire populace, because I did mention it here earlier on, um, the CRC um, um, com com encompasses the voice of the masses, because they took a two-year period whereby they thought the length length and breadth of this Gambia um, to make sure we get the best law possible. So um, unfortunately it was thrown out and part of our key uh, priorities is to make sure that we revive the draft constitution and make sure it is implemented accordingly. The aspirants are expected to return on Saturday to know their fate after a thorough scrutiny by the IEC officials. Meanwhile, all the aspiring candidates who submitted their nomination documents on Thursday were also at the IEC office to collect their acceptance letters, having met all the requirements. Nominations for the 9th April National Assembly elections continued in Banjul tomorrow. Janke Ture, GRTS News. And are still on the nominations for the upcoming parliamentary elections because in the North Bank region, three candidates from the People's Democratic Organization for Independence and Socialism, DOI, filed in their nomination papers, while seven candidates from the United Democratic Party, the UDP, including a female candidate, also filed in their nomination papers at the IEC's regional office in Kerewan. Famara Kanyi picks up the rest of that story. Nomination began early in the morning. By around 9 a.m., PDOIS candidate Hamadi S. Lee of the Lower Nyomi constituency, escorted by party stalwarts, arrived at the IEC grounds to submit his nomination papers. We hope to win. We are confident and we have um, people behind us. So we don't see we don't see any obstacle on the road. The PDOIS have put up three candidates in the seven constituencies across the region. Ali Cham of Opanyomi and Mumud K. Endur of Jokadu disclosed their plans to journalists. In that house, I will make sure that anything that is progressive, 
I will uh, support it. Anything that is, regre uh, that is not progressive, I will against it for the general betterment of the Gambia. I think uh, to make a very good rules and order for the country is far better than promoting things that you know that is beyond your limitation. If the Gambians need poverty to be eradicated, justice to come into play, and ignorance to be moved out, to be eradicated in the country, and the youth employment. Let's look at the Bagway syndrome. How many people are dying? They are all going there because they have no opportunity. They have opportunities in the Gambia, and all these things is in our manifesto. And then came the United Democratic Party with their ambience. They stormed the IEC regional office. Maimuna Gay of Sabah Senjal, the only female candidate of the party in the region, accompanied by a rousing and jubilant crowd of supporters, all set for the race to parliament. Speaking to GRTS, she revealed her confidence ahead of the elections. I can never be silenced by anybody because as you see me, I am an, a competent woman who can play my role. I'm a very comp uh, competent woman who can do much better. I think I can contribute for the betterment of this country. I would like to assure our party leader, Honorable Lawyer Usain Udabo, uh, that we're going to win this election, inshallah. And uh, I would also assert you people that UDP is a law-abiding party. The law of the land should be respected. If you are really interested in uh, developing this nation. Kemo Gasama's final appearance was seen by many as a new wave of politicking in the lower Badibu constituency. Backed by his people from far and near, he said his mission is to uproot the former NPP back parliamentarian. I swear to Allah, I took allergy to that part of our constituency, Lower Badibu North. Allergy was never known at that, at, at that part, uh, part of Lower Badibu. I took him there. I introduced Allergy to the people of that end. Of course, that the notion of norm, some of those people are not, is that norm. Uh, they are always norm um, in line with uh, the ruling um, party. But this time around, it's going to be a different thing. The race continues in the Jokadu constituency. A former deputy governor of the region, Mohamed Omar of Munyagen, is contesting for the first time. Mr. Mar, after undergoing the nomination process, told journalists that the political playing field is level and he is confident of securing a win. I'm a trained agriculturalist. I know how farmers are suffering nowadays. Come to the testing of this year. It's very poorly conducted. Government have not taken any step towards the farmers. It's a risk farming. Government doesn't take any responsibility as far as farmers are concerned to address the farmers' concern. The nomination continues with scheduled dates for independent candidates. For the news, I am Farmer Akani. In the Kanifing administrative area, the IEC returning officer on Friday received the nomination papers of nine independent candidates vying for National Assembly seats in the area. Khadija Tujuara tells us more. The IEC returning officer in Kanifing Friday received the nomination papers of nine candidates vying for National Assembly in the Kanifing municipality. One of the aspirants withdrew while another aspirant was rejected. Speaking to the press, an independent candidate for Serekunda constituency, Ibrahim Savage, said he is optimistic of victory whilst promising his commitment to national development. The reason that I am vying for this position is for the sake of love of country, love of my people, particularly um, those that I live with in Serekunda Central. Uh, well, my expectations are very high um, because um, for me, Serekunda being in the heart of uh, KMC um, uh, should have been further than where it is now. Well, I have to commend two people, if I have to be very honest to myself, that is um, uh, two people that have been here in the National Assembly representing this constituency, which is Honorable Omar A. Jalo and uh, Honorable Abu Bakar Khalifa Salah. Um, and I believe that they've done a lot. Right now, I want to put my foot where they have stopped and then move ahead and bring development for Serekunda Central. Other aspirants, Yusuf Ajayte of Bunung constituency, Usman Jai for Talinding and Abduba for Serekunda respectively, all pointed out the importance of vying for the National Assembly seat. You know, as a young Gambian, the way the country is moving, obviously it needs to be, you know, it's a very big challenge for us because right now, as all of us have seen, 
that what uh, our parliamentary, the last parliamentary rules, you understand what we are doing. So it's um, definitely we cannot give you know, credit to them because everybody in this country nowadays is crying and then we do not have good laws in this country because everything is going on normal. So meaning that the laws of this country and policies has to be strengthened. So without strengthening the laws of this country, meaning that at the end of the day we cannot have good policies. Well, the process was fair, indeed. Um, there is nothing that I have to worry about. Um, the way I was welcomed with my, with my delegation and we were seated. And I, make so, I made sure that I followed the, 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 the guideline given and submitted and everything was fine. There was actually no problem, indeed, by the grace of God, because we fought for it, my team fought for it. I mean, it, it took us sleepless nights to sit and make, put this together and I am 100% sure that inshallah, maybe 1% one, one will be out, but 99% inshallah that it shall be accepted. It's high time for young people to take responsibility of their nation. When you go around the world, in most countries today, you have young people, determined, skillful, talented, and intelligent, who believe that their country can do better. And when you look at the political environment here, most politicians you see today, prior to even 2016, more or less are on the verge of retiring. Where are the young people? Where are the intellectuals? So we as young people have to take responsibility of, the, of, responsibility of this country. So I came into this race to make sure that I serve my constituents, I contributed, I, I, I will contribute to make sure there is change, and I will also see how best I can help young people and to continue to move forward. Reporting for GRTS News, I am Khadija Tujuara. We now move to the West Coast region where nomination of National Assembly candidates for the Brikama administrative area continues. As al Hajimbai reports, 21 independent aspirants have filed their nomination papers on Friday. The atmosphere was scintillating. The euphoria was high and clear for all to see as 21 independent aspiring candidates filed in their nomination papers today in Brikama, West Coast region. The candidates, including youth, women, and differently able, joined several other candidates who had previously filed in their nomination papers to contest for the 12 constituencies for West Coast region in the forthcoming National Assembly elections. First of all, I thank the state very well of creating a conducive environment. Because without a conducive environment, a process of this nature will never happen. Let governments know that the country, the atmosphere of the country is taking another dimension. And let the governments know that disability is not an ability. And I'm confident that come 9th of April, I'll be there without segregation, without marginalization, without negligence. Because I believe I'm the most credible person when it comes to knowledge, I'm good. You come to working experience, I'm an expert. I'm on the candidate that are within Sanamento right now. I work, I serve the state 39 good years at the office of the president, as director of digital satellite communication. As candidates wait for one final hurdle when their papers are open to public scrutiny, one of them, who is currently the Alcalo of Jungle Village in the Fony General constituency, Momodu Eba was asked to provide a resignation letter from his post as an alcalo. Suleiman Jalo of Old Yundum was also rejected for his participation in the last general voter registration exercise. Jalo, however, can appeal the decision at the office of the IC chairman within 48 hours as provided by the Elections Act. Uh, within the 48 for the next 48 hours yes and i am going to do that well, i feel it will be a little bit unf it will be unfair because uh, the people of old Yunum, uh, does not have a proper representation they've not been represented well so if they, if you were represented well then it would have been necessary for me to come and stand here to contest but it's because of that they've not been represented that's why i'm here and i feel a little bit uh, disappointed that i am rejected by the iec with just 12 constituencies in the West Coast region and a voter population of over 300,000 people, a staggering number of over 65 candidates have so far filed in their nomination papers and set to contest in the forthcoming National Assembly elections. This is solely a victory for democracy, but an evident 
of political divide in the West Coast region. Alajim by GRTS News. Moving on, the Vice President of the Republic of the Gambia, Her Excellency Dr. Issa Ture, has commended the Borough Administration for promoting the rights of women and girls. She described the establishment of the Ministry of Women, Gender and Social Welfare as a symbol of hope that accelerates advocacy and promotes issues surrounding marginalized groups towards national development. Vice President Ture made remarks recently in an interview with GRTS as part of activities commemorating International Women's Day. Let's take a listen to the excerpt prepared by GRTS's Usman Mane. As a women's rights activist fighting for a long time, I can say that today women are beginning to see freedom coming. There is still a lot to be done. But I have few things to bring in. We have now had our own Minister for Gender, Children and Social Affairs. That is a dedicated ministry to deal with gender issues, women's rights issues, and to advance equality and non-discrimination of women. We are also having laws and policies that are gender sensitive and gender responsive and promote the rights of women. We have also budgets that are being given to this ministry to work on a lot of things. So we are now beginning to set the context for what I call the emancipation, the freedom of women, and for the strategic direction for women of the Gambia based on the plans and what we have. As it is right now, we are the democratic, this democratic dispensation is looking at we need to, we still have gaps, like we, are, we need more women in certain positions. But women are now coming and gradually we are building up that trajectory to ensure that the system looks at women from the point of view of equality, non-discrimination, participation, and their voices to be heard and to be listened in these key decision-making positions. We are also trying to influence the new forthcoming new election uh, uh, constitution that is supposed to bring in all the Bill of Rights and women's rights in particular. And from the way things are, and the way the trajectory is going is very, very positive. We need to do more to make sure that we put, pull all those strands of advocacy together and bring it to the policy level and to put it in the supreme laws of the country, which is the constitution of the Gambia. And I am very positive that that's going to happen. But there is still yet a lot to be done. We still have to uh, close the gender gaps in certain positions, like uh, representation in boards, representation in certain key positions like the National Assembly, representation also in the um, local government, and also representation in the state-owned enterprises and other forms of enterprises that key decision making are going on. We still need to do that. And we are on the right trajectory. It's a question of engaging, and we are really engaging actively, trying to consolidate on the advocacy over the years to make sure that we bring it to what we call substantive equality for women of the Gambia. That was the Vice President of the Republic of the Gambia, Her Excellency Dr. Issa Ture, highlighting the gains made in girls and women empowerment in the country. Moving on, the regional rice value chain project on Friday presented a tractor and two power tailors with accessories to the National Seed Secretariat at a brief ceremony held at the held in Abuko. Says you covered the presentation ceremony and he now reports. The regional rice value chain project jointly funded by Islamic Development Bank and Government of the Gambia is targeting to benefit 80,000 people in the Gambia. The main objective of the project is to reduce high importation rate of rice into the country and enhance economic growth through improved production, processing and marketing of rice as well and power private sector participation in the rice value chain. Uh, we are gathered here today <clears throat> to receive these um, implements from the regional rice um, value chain development project in the form of a tractor and two power tillers. Um, all is geared towards enhancing our capacity um, so that we are um, well positioned to deliver on our mandate. That is to make sure that good quality seeds are available for our farmers at any point in time at affordable prices. Um, we all know the importance of rice 
in the Gambia. Um, rice is a crop uh, with um, high economic um, importance uh, because all of you will agree with me that a lot of resources in the form of hard currency is devoted to the importation of rice every year in this country. And that is a big burden, creating or causing a big burden on our national economy um, in many ways. The importance of rice in the country cannot be overemphasized. So any effort that is geared towards um, enhancing the production and productivity of rice in this country should be cherished and, should, and, is, and is laudable. Officials of the beneficiary institutions lauded the gesture saying the donated tractors and power tillers would immensely improve rice production in the country. Okay, I am honored uh, to represent the, the, uh, the Honorable Minister for Agriculture. In this um, handing over ceremony, and I'm equally delighted to hand over the keys of this implement to the Deputy Director of uh, National Seed Secretariat. Congratulations, sir, and we hope this equipment will be put into good use for the benefit of the farmers. Thank you very much. All the best. Thank you very much. In order to attain the objective of General Rice Value Chain Project, Officials of the project are supporting the National Seed Secretariat in both their operation capacity to produce certified seed farmers, which is in line with the component one of the project. Seth Juf, reporting for Justice News. The Gambia Ferry Services has lamented the spreading of fishing nets across ferry navigation routes along the Banjul Barra crossing points. During a press briefing on Friday, officials of the Gambia Ferry Services said they have been experiencing the practice by some fisher folk in the area and call for a stop as the practice can incapacitate ferries and impede services. Louis Mendy picks up the rest of that story. Kunta Kinte. One of the most reliable ferries plying the Banjul Barra seven nautical miles was recently rehabilitated at the tune of 30 million dollars to enhance efficiency in the ferry service delivery. But on Wednesday, the unexpected happened. One of the fishermen making fortune in the area cast a net along the ferry navigation route and Kunta Kinte was trapped when sailing to Barra. Such incidents could damage one propeller unit of the ferry or the whole four units, and to fix one unit alone will cost the ports 200,000 euros. Personnel of the ferries are worried that if fishermen continue to cast nets along the ferry navigation route, the worst could happen, and crossing from Banjo to Para will be a challenge. Pada Odasanyang is the director of operations at the ferries. What it does to the ferry is when it entangles with the propulsion system of the ferry, it forces the ferry's engine to shut down. When that happens, the impact goes just beyond shutting down the engine. Sometimes it creates much more impact on the propulsion system. And uh, when that happens, these are things that we cannot fix immediately. On this occasion, we are lucky. That's our belief, that we, we are lucky that the ferry is able to come back again to service within hours of intervention. Mr. Sanyan said it is for this reason that they invited the media to help them spread the information for public consumption. It impacts us highly negatively. So we think it is very important that we call upon you, the media uh, practitioners, the fraternity, so that uh, perhaps you can help us further our dissemination of information regarding such activities. But this is not the first time personnel of the ferries are removing fishing nets from the Banjul Barra ferry navigation route. Francis Gomez, the Director of Technical Services at the ferries, further explain. Actually, this has been going very frequently. In almost uh, every week, we'll call a diver to dive these ferries to either remove the net or ropes that are entangled. And this delays the operations of the ferry. And sometimes our customers will come here whilst they uh, find out that we are doing these activities. They are impatient to wait for this. 
So this has caused us a lot of things. And definitely it's very important this information is out there for people to know and understand also. It's not a wish to delay, but some of these things are very, very costly on our side. And so what happened on Wednesday when the Kunta Kinte ferry got incapacitated in the middle of the sea? Nami Jawara, the general manager at the Gambia Ferries, has the answer. We quickly reacted by calling on the, the Kankujeri tugboat to come on to the ferry. Um, and the ferry was safely landed and banyun here, and the passengers were discharged. But then we called on the divers, and it was found out that this um, net was entangled on the propellers of the ferry, and that was the reason for the incapacitation of the, of the ferry. Meanwhile, personnel of the ferries are engaging stakeholders, including fishermen, to help them understand what it means to cast nets along the ferry navigation route so that they can stop the practice as it can also lead to them losing their expensive nets which they depend on for livelihood. Lamin Jawara again. And, and of course the community in Banyun and Bara so that you know, we see how best we can engage the community in a meaningful manner you know, uh, so that you know, fishing can go along but at the same time the, the ferries are also protected. The ferries MD Lamin Jawara use the opportunity to inform the public of the ongoing interventions to improve the infrastructures of the different ferry crossing points across the country, including the slipways of the Bansan crossing point, as was done in Janjambure, all intended to improve ferry services in the area. The Kaur ferry is also under repairs and should be ready for use in two weeks' time, said MD Lamin Jawara. Louis Mendy, GRTS. Over now to some sports because the National Inter-Schools Athletic Championship has kicked off at the Independent Stadium in Bacau, where schools from across the country converge to compete in different track and field events. Day one saw some intriguing races in the 100 and 200 meters, among other middle distance events. Hundreds of students showed up at the stadium to cheer their respective schools. We will bring you details of that in our subsequent newscast. And with that, we will take a quick break. When we return, we will look at news beyond our borders. Do stay. Run with all your heart. <laughs> with belongings to your roots. Run for the Gambia, our homeland. Run for what makes you wake up every single morning. Extend the sports glory of the Scopans. Keep rising. It's your turn. Banjo Africell Marathon. Sunday, 27th of March, 2022. Run, Banjo. Modu came in to buy some bathroom floor tile, but once he laid eyes on our basins, he fell in love with a stunning basin and with a breathtaking faucet. <laughs> with a brand new mirror too, at a bargaining price. So, I got a bathtub too. Oh yes, he picked up a bathtub too. It's Batty Days time at Batty Max. Enjoy exceptional discounts up to 70% on all our product families. From March 5th to 19th, you're going to splurge. Batty Max, everything for contraction from foundation to finishing. Welcome back. You're watching GRTS News, and I am SSO. Over now to the internationals. A Nigerian woman has produced eco-friendly sanitary towels to help girls stay in school. The 37-year-old Tabita Abimuku, an equal rights advocate, says she started the venture to support young women and girls in poor communities who have little or no access to sanitary hygiene products. The initiative also seeks to reduce environmental pollution. Details of that in the CGTN report. 37-year-old Tabitha Abimiku runs this eco-friendly reusable sanitary towel company in Abuja. The eco-rights advocate says she started a venture so as to support young women and girls in poor communities who had little to no access to sanitary hygiene products. We have 800 million 
um, girls and women who menstruate every day all over the world. And to shock you to know that in um, Africa, 60% cannot even afford sanitary towel. Virtual Spads, we've been able to design, we created and deployed one of Africa's pioneer reusable sanitary pad called Virtual Spads. Virtual Spads is very affordable. It costs even 20% less than the single-use disposable sanitary pad. And it's also helping to keep girls in school and also eco-friendly, so it's biodegradable. It doesn't contribute to landfill and also, you know, environmental pollution. UNICEF estimates that one in ten girls in Africa miss three to five days of school a year as a result of their periods. Others are even forced to stop schooling altogether. In Nigeria, a small pack of sanitary towels costs about $1.50 and millions can hardly afford that. At this outreach event marking International Women's Day, organizers are teaching schoolgirls in the outskirts of Abuja about the importance of menstrual hygiene and sanitation. They hope that information can help keep them in school. For women and girls advocate, an outreach like this can give young girls in rural communities an equal opportunity with their male counterparts. And for the young girls who are beneficiaries, having access to these reusable parts is a welcome development. Sometimes I don't have money to buy pads, so I use tissue or rag. But now we've been taught about hygiene, and we've been given sanitary towels that can last us for a year. I'm really happy. Most sanitary products in Nigeria are imported and are heavily taxed. Advocates say more organizations and the government should go for sustainable and homemade menstrual hygiene products. If issues like taxes are being removed, and maybe government schools, which we know that they are quite disadvantaged if the government can partner with organizations like Virtual Spads to distribute free uh, reusable pads to young girls in these schools. It will go a long way because our pads can actually be used for more than a year, but it has a lifespan of uh, five years. They hope that this will not just help keep girls in school, but help save the environment too. Ajak Mangut, CGTN, Abuja. Well, that CGTN report there brings us to the end of this edition of the news. But before we go, a recap of our top stories. More aspirants for the forthcoming parliamentary elections have submitted their nomination papers to the Independent Electoral Commission. The Vice President, High Excellency Dr. Issa Tuture, has commended government of the Gambia for promoting the rights and the welfare of women and girls. Enhancing agricultural mechanization, the regional value chain project has presented agricultural machines to the National Seed Secretariat in Abuko. And in sports, the National Interschools Athletic Championship has kicked off at the Independent Stadium in Bacau. And away from home, a Nigerian woman have produced eco-friendly sanitary towels to help girls stay in school as well as save the environment. Well, that was all we had time for in this edition of the news. Thanks for the place of your company. You can join us at 2200 hours for more news. Until then, do stay tuned to GRTS.